It has now almost four months passed since the last eruption started in the Sunuka crater chains of the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland. We have now 14 million cubic meters of the magma. That is around 120 million uh, tons of it uh, in the area ready to erupt. When they are rising, they crack the ground, the cracks create earthquakes, the fractures. And this is the numbers of them you can see here. And this is the magnitude of them. They're quite volcanic in nature. These cracks are the sign. Let me just the, explain first. The, the blue lines show tectonic earthquakes. These are due to the movements uh, of the fault lines. And volcanic earthquakes, so magma are ones, are the purple the ones. These are the rising and boiling of magma. Small. When These the boil uh, happens in the, the magma, it practically releases the, the gas depression. Inside the magma, releasing it. The risk assessment due to this is uh, going to change in a few day, coming days. Although at the same time here now, it stays similar to what it was. People are waiting for the biggest eruption ever in this area since the eruptions started last year. And uh, we are getting ready for that. Magma volume was never so huge. Since the seventh eruption of the Sunduka crater chains in the Reykjanes Peninsula of Iceland started, uh, in the late uh, November 2024, it has now passed around four months. Four months is a long period of time, probably the longest. And we have a lot of earthquakes since then in that area. The earthquakes are concentrated in clusters that you can see here uh, near the uh, sling of uh, and to the north of it. And the lot of earthquakes that we see are distributed in clusters that we see here. They're increasing. And the magnitude of them also has uh, accordingly changed over time. You can see in the next bar chart, which you, you see there uh, in the green light, these are definitely defining a series of the uh, increase in the magnitude around the time of the eruption. In November we had it, in, and now we are having it around from February to March now. These tremors make the magma, which is a known Newtonian fluid, to flow, something like ketchup. And when the flow happens, we see the evidence in the GPS data in the form of the fall and rise of the ground. This is the GPS data it measures the distance between the ground and the satellite. And by that, we can see how much the land has risen due to the accumulation of the magma. We are seeing this. If I want to show it in a cartoon form, this is what is happening. It swells up, then it spreads. It creates practically seals. It's wasted practically. It's not contributing to the eruption. The rise and fall of the uh, ground due to the magma accumulation creates this uh, effect. And that is the reason their time between the last eruption and this eruption has been so long. So far, the longest, almost four months now is passed. And we expect a lot of magma has accumulated, be accumulated, which on a very conservative estimate means around 300 million tons or megatons of magma, assume a density of three for the basalt, have been accumulated under this. It doesn't mean all of it will erupt, it has formed seals and the dikes. The risk assessment stays the same, but it may change at any moment. This risk assessment, of course, is a legal document. It is informing the public and anybody working in that area, the risk is there. At the moment, is this what you can see here? We are expecting the biggest eruption so far. A date has been suggested, probably around 10 days, one, one week time.